Welcome back from the reporter's block. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Inside Pages on Metro Television. My name is Mo Radu now. This is the WhatsApp line. In case you have any comments that you want to share with us, the WhatsApp line is 05000 So 05000 one. So that's the WhatsApp line if you have any comments you want to share. Whether it's on Professor Raymond or Togo Bet's comments he made recently at the Rata Hotel or it's about the Ghanaians um, who have fled war-torn uh, Ukraine who are in town. If you have any comments you want to share, I'll be very more than happy to hear from you on that. So on February 28th, Professor Raymond Atuguba, who is the dean of the University of Ghana Legon Law Faculty, delivered a lecture titled a reviewed 1992 constitution and its impact on ghana's economy now that lecture was under the auspices of solidaire ghana now most of the things that professor togoba said um really did not create any controversy apart from the side which has to do with the fact that the socioeconomic conditions were ripe or can um, create or destabilize this country uh, something that these critics have not taken kindly to at all let's now watch professor raymond atogoba uh, delivering that particular lecture not the entire lecture but aspects of it and when we come back we'll speak to uh, and also the reactions that uh, greeted his lecture and when we come back we'll speak to the head of legal solidar ghana dean of the university of ghana law school Professor Raymond Datuguba lamented that Ghana's economy has been plunged into a debt crisis due to economic mismanagement, irrational borrowing, and corruption. Bloomberg, Reuters, and Fitch all agreed that Ghana's debt has moved into deeper distress at over 80% of G GDP. The rating agencies are that Ghana is at risk of a debt crunch with interest payments alone absorbing about half of total government revenues. He further emphasized that living conditions of ordinary Ghanaians have worsened under the current MPP administration. When things were not one-tenth as bad under the Mahama regime, Occupy Ghana marched on the office of the president, the then Flagstaff House, now called Jubilee House, on 1st July 2014, many leaders, clergy, intellectuals, lawyers, journalists, many Ghanaians urged them on as they raided the premises of the office of the president, insulted the president to high heavens by the minute, by the hour, by the day, emboldened by a correct interpretation of the law to the effect that it is not a crime to insult the president. Professor Raymond Atuguba says the prevailing economic conditions, if not checked, may give rise to instability. In 2016, the price of a liter of petrol was 3.75 Ghana cities. Today, it has broken the eight and is selling at almost eight cities a liter. I used to fill my tank with 400 Ghana cities in 2016. Today, I fill it with 1,000 Ghana cities when it is empty. A bowl of kinky was 70 pesos in 2016. Today, it is two cities at my last visit, and it seems to have shrunk in size. <laughs> Trot fare from Circle to Adenta was three cities, 70 pesos in 2016. Today, it is seven cities. And yet, income levels have remained virtually the same. He therefore urged members of parliament to pass the e-levy, lest the economy may be plunged into recession. In concrete terms, we need to implement the following steps in order to prevent a coup and the collapse of our economy. The first step is to pass the darn farafucking e-levy bill immediately and implement it effectively. Yes, you heard me right. The e-levy is both Dan and a farafaka. However, to prevent the collapse of the economy and a return to the stranglehold of the IFIs, we have no choice but to pass it.
The NDC, those irresponsible ones among them, should be very careful. Calling for coup today and coup tomorrow does not inure to anybody's interest, anybody's benefit. Coup does not resolve difficulties in any particular country. We should be careful about that. They are not interested in doubling in politics. The group before them um, have doubled in politics. We are all the witnesses to what happened. They are not interested. Clearly, he's an NDC sympathizer. Indeed, I do know that at a point in time, he worked with the office of the president. He's an NDC sympathizer. No problem at all with that. But what it is is that the constitution allows for the people of Ghana to speak at periodic times. The last one was 2020. We had the election. Four more years, we spent almost one and a half or so. Uh, thereafter, we go for election. If the people do not like the NDC MPP administration because they feel that we messed up, they don't like the whatever, it is for the people of the country to pass their judgment. As much as we are thinking about the fact that it's hardship, which we all agree because of the COVID and other factors, mm -hmm. It is even better today than the time we took over. Right. It bring the facts. They are there. It's not about, look, the same bunch of plantain sold on Medina market is different from Abu Bloshi, different from Kumasi market. And that's why we have statutory bodies such as statistical services and other bodies to give us uh, price variations and averages to tell us inflationary rate. Is it not better than we took over? Right. How can anybody say that the regime under which that with all the economic hardship has been able to offer free education for, I mean, a poor family to also go up in society and change the long-term uh, economic growth and, and, and stability, some of performance. You say, no, this is the time that we are saying that they could be cool, they could be, they are all cool mongers. They will not be successful. Ghana has gone far beyond cool deter. We are a democratic dispensation. We believe in that MPP will go, MPP will come, NDC will go, NDC will come. We want peace and tranquility, we want coexistence. We believe in diverse opinions, but we don't believe in those who are wearing political boots and they pretend they are professionals and experts. And where there is no evil wolf, they are trying to cry wolf. No. So very harsh and very feisty reactions, um, as, 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 as it looks like. And that was the Member of Parliament for the Nshayasu constituency, uh, Mr. Stephen Amua. I, I mean, popularly called Stika, you heard all the things that he said about in reaction to Professor Raymond at Tugube's presentation. So what we have done, um, or what we intend to do on Inside Pages this morning, is to invite the organizers of this event. And I'm talking about Solide Ghana, who is head of legal, uh, who's called um, Lawyer Atukwe Kwe. Uh, he's joined us in the studio for a quick conversation on everything that has happened so far. And maybe maybe we need to find out indeed what, what's a solid air Ghana, what their mission is and what their key objectives are. That's extremely important because we need to marry the key objectives or we need to look at the key objectives as compared to what exactly, how things have turned out um, with regards to this particular event that happened at the Errata a hotel. Good morning. It's good to see you. How are you, sir? I'm great. Right. Um, first of all, I think that to be fair, in order for us to be able to put this whole conversation in its um, proper perspective, would you be kind enough to tell us about Solid Air Ghana? What is this? Is it a think tank? Is it just a forum? What is Solid Air Ghana? What's your mission? And what exactly were the key objectives for putting this um, event together. Okay, thank you very much. Simply put, okay. um, Solidaire Ghana is a brand name for Solidaire Go Governance Forum. Solidaire Governance Forum. Solidaire Governance Forum. Okay. But the brand name is um, Solidaire Solidaire Ghana. Ghana. Okay, so it's a governance forum. Yes. What does that mean? Governance forum, what does that oh, mean? Oh, we all know what governance is. all pivoted on the subject good governance okay. for the nation. Okay. And good, good governance carries a lot within mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so it's a civil society organization. Right. Um, like all civil society organizations, what makes Solidair Ghana different is that most of the civil society organizations in Ghana appears to us that they are towards the center right. So the right of center? 
the right of center. Right. Solidaire Ghana thinking, reasoning, philosophy is towards the center left. Okay. And for a long time in this country, we haven't had, we used to have development challenge, but they didn't really come up. Right. And so what Solidaire Ghana seeks to do is to give policy alternatives, critique policies that would help grow this country with center-left reasoning. Right. People-centered, if mm -hmm. you like. So that's all about Solidaire Ghana. We have um, fellows and senior fellows. Mm -hmm. Professor Raymond Atugoba is one of the senior fellows of Solidaire Ghana. Okay. Exactly. We have a lot of them. We have Dr. Ali Dusedu. Right. Um, the president for Solidaire Ghana is Dr. Kadma Mills. Okay. Yeah, Nanama, Dr. Nanama Blount. The same Blount Dr. Kadma Mills that we know, who is the brother of the former president. Yes, the uh, economist. Professor, Professor yes, Mills. Okay. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, Professor Bobobi. Okay. Uh, the former running mate for CPP. Right. Um, it's also a fellow, a senior okay. fellow for Solidaire. So, uh, Dr. Nasa from the University of Ghana. Okay. It's also a fellow mm -hmm. of Solidaire Ghana. Uh, Professor Odro, Dean of UCC, is okay. also a fellow right. of Solidaire Ghana. And so Solidaire Ghana, it's only a platform, civil society organization that has brought, you know, men of reason, mm -hmm. men who have accomplished, okay. both in academia and in industry, right. bring them together as fellows to do more reasoning and okay. into government policies. Right. So Ghana is only a special purpose vehicle under mm -hmm. CSO. Okay. Creating the platform for these people to, if you like, um, air their views on policies of government, the right. direction of government, give policy alternatives so that this can help, you know, our governance structure, our system to grow more. How long has Solid Air Ghana been in existence? Oh, it's barely over one year. It's barely over one year. Exactly. So you have brought together a tall list and a wide range of persons with different expertise in different area. Exactly. To come and express their views on national um, uh, issues that bother national development, but then, but then present solutions which are more left of center. Um, inclined. Exactly. That's, that's what Solidaire Ghana is exactly. all about. Exactly. And right. the platform is Agenda for Ghana Series. Okay. So Agenda, the platform is Agenda for Ghana Series. Exactly. And the, Professor Tugabe's one was the second edition. Oh, that's the second edition. Yes. We did one. Dr. Ali Dusedu did okay. one at Ereta Hotel right. about three months ago right. on good governance. Yes. I remember that. I think I, mod I moderated that. Exactly. That event. Yeah. We have the next one, okay. which is going to happen at UCC campus. Okay. Um, the government has refused to review the free SHS. Okay. And so what we want to do mm -hmm. is to look at the free SHS, the concept, the implementation, where okay. we are, okay. and all of that. And we right. are going to do that. You okay, know, that's fine. In, 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 at the UCC. So Solidar um, Ghana, mm -hmm. it's only, if you like, attempting to look at national, very important national issues. Okay. And then prefer solutions That's with right. center-left reasoning. So you decided to put this together. Now, this particular one, is, it's titled... In fact, that's, pro, that's the... That's pro, so did you give Professor Raymond Atogoba a topic to come and deliver? Or you tell him... You, so you, you discuss in broad strokes what you're looking at, and then he decides what topic... To come and deliver on it's is that how i don't know how do you okay so how do you, how do you go about so it? we have a plan of action for about a year okay and this was done by the board and so one of what was in our plan mm -hmm. was to look at the uh, constitutional review process mm -hmm. that was begun yes chaired by professor fiajo yes remember dr tugubaga played a role professor Atuba was the executive secretary Absolutely. to that particular commission. Okay. And so when we got to that area, we were thinking that who should do this? Okay. And we thought because Professor Atuba was the executive secretary, mm -hmm. he would be the best person okay. uh, for this public lecture. Right. And that's how we selected him. Okay. But then we also didn't want to talk about the 
um, constitution review process which has stalled. Just okay. speak about it. Right. But also link it to current economic situation in the country. Okay. And so we sat with him, mm -hmm. and together we agreed that the topic should be um, a reviewed, a reviewed nineteen ninety two constitution, constitution and, and its impact, impact on Ghana's on economy. Exactly. Looking so, forward. Looking forward. Looking forward. So that was a topic you agreed on. We agreed together. I see. So did you have any idea? Did you, for instance, have in advance a detailed write-up on what the, prof the good old professor was going to say? Yes, of course. You did. Yes, right. of course. The board would always want to know what you want to talk about. Okay. And then, if you like, um, come to agreement with you. Okay. So that you don't say anything. We bless the document. We bless the you document. approve it. We approve it. Before it is delivered. Before it was what delivered. What were you seeking to achieve with this particular topic? You said, you, you, you started, but I think you didn't end. Mm. You're saying a reviewed 1992 constitution mm. and its impact on Ghana's economy. What were, you, what were you seeking to achieve with this topic? Look, all that we had in mind was that the constitution of Ghana um, should be able to propel develop, economic mm. development. Right. It's not just about law, mm -hmm. but it should be able to propel economic development. And so what we had in mind was constitu uh, constitutionalizing development. Okay. Governments come and governments go. The nature of the constitution is such that when new governments come, they can decide not to continue with policies of um, its the previous, predecessor. Yes, the previous administration. And nobody would hold that government accountable for that decision. And it has, ha it has happened since 1992. Right. And so Solidar Ghana was looking at a situation where we can constitutionalize development mm -hmm. such that there are certain areas of development when new governments come, they cannot change okay. when it comes to issues about education because it affects a lot of people and our development. Right. Health, infrastructure. These things are very pivotal to our development. And so we think that some of these things should be addressed so that we can constitutionalize that. And it should be part of the review process, electing of MMDCs. Okay. It has been on the table since, I think, 1996. Nothing has happened. Nobody is being held for it. And so we had all these things in mind, separating the AG from the Minister of Justice. Some of these things, we have spoken about it, ensuring that ministers who ministers should not be members of parliament mm -hmm. so that parliament can be a career path on its own okay. separate from the executive mm -hmm. these things because they are married they are impeding development right and so we wanted to look at these things under the umbrella of development mm -hmm. and then look at the economy itself okay. how has our constitution addressed the issues affecting us today in the economy, which is, as we speak, mm -hmm. very, very bad. And one of the things that perhaps, so one of the key objectives was, and if you listen to what Professor Raymond Atogoba delivered, is that he eventually established the fact that this constitution is not delivering on its mandate. It's mm. not delivering on the social economic goods. Mm. And, 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 and that's why, for instance, perhaps I want to believe that's why he went ahead to talk about the fact that, look, Despite the challenges that we have, we have to painfully accept the e-levy. And that's, it, again, um, it's something that uh, there were persons there. In fact, I watched the entire program. There were persons there who, did, who disagreed with them. But that's another, that's another topic for another day. Let's now look at the, the elephant in the room. Now, the elephant in the room, and I'm, and I'm saying the elephant in the room relative to the reactions that have greeted the presentation, because it appears everybody is concerned about a particular thing that the good old professor said. We do not want a coup in this country. Yet, I fear that if we do not act quickly, we may have one in our hands very soon. A former colleague doctoral student at Harvard wrote in his dissertation, also in Ghana, he now teaches at a war college in the US. In the US. Imagine the name of the college, War College. Whilst my topic was on the Ghana police, his topic was on the Ghana military. Naturally, our paths intersected, 
and we have remained friends since. My friend's PH dissertation was on the topic, why setting coups succeed and why others fail. His case study was Ghana. My current assessment that Ghana may be ripe for a coup partly stems or springs from the knowledge I gained from accompanying my friend through part of his doctoral research on this topic. It does not help matters if we consider Samuel Huntington's thesis on the snowballing effects of coup in the sub-region and the closeness of recent coups to home. I urge my good friend, the Minister of National Security, the Honorable Kandapa, to have a conversation with my friend at the War College. Why would you invite a professor of law to come and engage in coup mongering? and asking that Ghanaians should perhaps stage a coup. Why would you want to do that? Um, Moro, sometimes I get worried. I'm a lawyer. Why? Why are you worried? And I ask myself that is it the case that we don't want the word coup, the word coup, mm. merely mentioning of the word coup, it's now a crime? Right. That should not be the case. Moro, if you go into any house that has a dog, okay, because of issues of occupier liability, you need to state that beware of dogs. It doesn't mean that you are telling your dogs or you are inciting your dogs to bite people who may be around your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Just look at the context in which Professor Atuguba gave his lecture. Mm -hmm. He started by giving the historical antecedents of this country vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the research work that was done by Sami. Right. And he indicated that as a country, all the coup d'etats that we have had, reasons were given to them. Mm -hmm. And the reasons that were given to them, one way or the other, was that the economy was not doing well. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians are impoverished. Mm -hmm. Things are difficult. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there was need for an intervention. Okay. So he gave, he tried to link the research work of Sami, his colleague, mm -hmm. to the historical antecedents of this country. Mm -hmm. And he indicated that the state of affairs of this nation mm -hmm. has become too dark. This country is getting darker and darker economic darkness I'm talking about mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So when you look at his speech, you recall that mm -hmm. even the finance minister yes. alluded to the fact that the country is broke. Mm -hmm. recently, recently, His Excellency the President, President Nadu, also admitted, there was admission from him that he's worried about the state of the economy. He is worried about the state of the economy. He has the state of economy in his hands. He told Ghanaians that they have the men to do the work. Dr. Baomia reminded us some time ago that when the fundamentals of the economy is weak, don't go far. Look at your currency. Look at our currency. All these situations, Dr. Atuguba gave the current state of the economy. And he indicated that these are some of the reasons that sometimes miscreants, people who don't believe in democracy and the rule of law, carry guns and they come. Mm -hmm. Let us not give anybody that chance. And that he does not support coup. Indeed, we don't need coup in this country. Mm -hmm. I don't support coup. There is no way I'm going to support coup because this country has come far. But then we know for a fact that whilst you are thinking of good things, Others somewhere may be thinking of destroying the very good things you have built. So he's reminding us that we need to do something very urgent as a country. It is in this premise that he said that from where he sits, one of the things we can do quickly and immediately is what? To approve of E-Levy. That was also conditional. Even though he gave three steps, conditions mm -hmm. that must be met, before the E-Levy is even con considered, which to me was invariably impossible. 
I did not agree with his conclusion. Right. But he's, he was doing his own analysis. Mm -hmm. And I, we can always agree and disagree. When he came to the E-Levy, he said that to avert people, to avert, to reboot the economy back, he feels one prescription in his view, if certain conditions are met, would help us. And that is the E-Levy. And he said that one, one of the reasons that must be met, the condition that must be met, is that the government must admit humbly that the economy is collapsing, that we are not doing well. Spin doctors and propaganda must stop. The government must come clear that they are suffering. They have mismanaged the economy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we all need to come together, probably in the form of this Senchi thing that was organized, okay. so that we can look at the economy and do proper prescription for it. That okay. is one. Right. Two, he said that Ghanaians don't trust. It is not because taxation, Ghanaians don't accept taxation or taxes. But it is because Ghanaians don't trust this government because of the way they have expended our money. Corruption is too much. No development. Nothing has been done. Agenda 111. Nothing has happened. Mm. Because of that, if you try to take more money from Ghanaians, they won't accept. Okay. So let's institute an independent commission that would take this money and then they will, be, uh, uh, they will, uh, um, 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 they will manage these funds. Right. So there should be proper transparency and accountability. Okay. Then the issue of the COVID funds. Yes. Government must account for it. Let me, let me, I'll come back to you on this because okay. I would take your thoughts on some of the reactions that have come. Okay. The information minister has spoken about it. He thinks it's an attack on democracy. Uh, we've had the member of parliament for Inshayasu, mm. and he says that no matter how bad the situation is today, it was worse mm. um, um, yesteryear. Mm. Uh, yesteryear. Mm. Um, you've also had Katie Amon, who's actually invite, asking that the police should invite the good old prof for some mm. questioning because mm. he is preparing the minds of Ghanaians for, for something that, you know, um, a Ghanaian should not accept. Mm. Let me go on the line and speak to Adib Sani. Adib Sani is a security analyst. Let's find out whether he also has any issues with what Professor Raymond Atogoba or he's going to put what Professor Raymond Atogoba has said in its uh, prosper security perspective. Adib Sani, good morning. It's good to see. It's good to have you on the show, sir. Tomorrow. My pleasure always. Well, and um, I want to thank you very much for accepting to talk to us uh, this morning on Inside Pages. Now, um, Mr. Sani. I'm sure that you have followed ex quite extensively what the good old professor said. Um, and I, I, I don't know whether I, ha I may have to read to you again what exactly the good old professor said. But if I don't have to, please go ahead to tell me what you make of what Professor Raymond Atuguba has said and whether you think there's any cause for worry. Well, Moro, I'm not a lawyer, but um, with the little legal 101 knowledge I have, I've taken the trouble to go through, I mean, watch the video over and over again about 10 times. And trust me, I tried finding faults with it, but I just couldn't find those faults. Um, rather, what I saw in the video is um, a legitimate, candid advice. In fact, free consultancy to government to rise up to the occasion and deal with the plethora of socioeconomic and political deficits that we're going through as, as a country, if not the possibility that this might happen would really come to pass. You see, the problem is if things happen and we talk about it, guess what happened? People call us and ask us, you as an expert, you as a lawyer, you as a media practitioner, when it was happening, why were you silent? And how come you're talking about it today? And I couldn't have agreed with the lawyer in the studio more. You see, if you police what people say, anybody who mentions something, then you arrest the person. I'm sorry to say you are no longer a democracy, but you are a primitive state. You have returned Ghana to those primitive era. Even the PNDC was, was criticized. Now, we have made the word coup a taboo. How dare you mention the word coup? Since when did the word coup become a taboo? We have so many lessons to learn from other jurisdictions. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you, Moro. Oh, sorry. 
I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Mr. Sadi, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Right. I'm saying that you say... You loud and yeah, you say that you're wondering why all of a sudden coup has become a taboo in this country. And I'm saying that, and I'm asking whether context doesn't matter. Well, it, it does matter. But so far as I am concerned, um, I mean, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but even if the context points to you trying to inspire coup, um, they say a prima facie case should have been established. The intention. Do, do you really have the intention? Because trust me, we, we are so knee-jerk in our approach. So for example, Oliver Baker talks about who and he would do it himself. I would have expected the authorities to sit you know, uh, 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 in the back, place surveillance on him and establish whether indeed he intended you know, carrying out that coup. But immediately he arrived at the airport, he's arrested. And we, we have illegitimized the word coup. And I don't think that's going to help because um, you are pushing more people into silence. Uh, pe silence, sorry. People would have legitimate concerns they cannot voice out. And when you have a domestic issue and you get to the counselor, what the counselor first does is for you to let it out. You say all that is on you. Get it off your chest. Um, at least it's one step towards easing the tension. But if people are suffering and they cannot talk, then uh, it builds up in them. And one day, a little spark with an inspirational leader can spell doom for the country. My issue is not even with coup. It's with people revolution. Let's not forget that something as minor as the price of bread going up in Sudan is what ended Umar al-Bashir. The Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia, a young man is selling by the roadside. The city authorities came to clear him. He was not happy about it. He burnt himself, and that is what sparked the Arab Spring. So in the midst of all these you know, economic issues, including widespread unemployment, uh, NAPO employees are not paid. They go on a demonstration and you tell them their demonstration would rather affect them. Uh, the, the violation of the rule of law, the violation of Article uh, 23 of, of the Constitution, the inconsistent application of the law, the seeming attack on press freedom with the over 30 media houses that were closed using all sorts of laws, and that is very characteristic with despotic regimes in other parts of the world. They use their law to go after their political innocence and with uh, uh, political opponents. And that is exactly what we are seeing in the country. And that, I must say, uh, is, is quite disturbing. And of course, creates those conditions for a coup to happen in as much as we pray it doesn't happen. But we have to wake up to the stark re reality that these are what causes coups. You sit in the trotters, and I always say it, Politicians would have to disguise themselves, sit in the truck trust, sit in the taxes, go to the markets, and listen to what people say about them. Recently, I was in my vehicle just around the uh, 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 National Theatre traffic. A hawker came across me, looked at me in the face. I looked at the person. Then she was like, no, he, it, it was actually he, Minister of Arm Robber. So I was like, me. Some uh, Munamuya ministers of armed robbers. No, I mean, so that should tell you the rage, the anger in the people. And you cannot talk about this for crying out loud. Now, Mr. Adib Sani, look, if you were in government, and I mean government as in central government, executive arm of government, won't you be concerned about what the good old professor has said, looking at what is happening in the sub region? Doesn't the government have any legitimate basis to be alarmed, to feel jittery, to feel, to be scared when the, when the word coup is, is, is mentioned? Okay, so they shouldn't be jittery about the word. They should be jittery about the context, like you said. What would create the condition for coup to happen? So I see this as a unique opportunity for the government to get introspective, to look at the nuances uh, 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 of the issues that have been raised, take immediate steps to address them. But what you see government communicators do is, and it seems to be a consistent pattern on social media. Oh, during JM's time, it was worse. Believe it or not, during JM's time, this is your second time, and you are still blaming JM for our woes. 
I mean, when, when, when Bush went to war the, 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 in, in the, Afghanistan... The, and right. The information, the information minister, for instance, says that um, the, the, you know, it appears that there's some commentary with what he calls anti-democratic insinuations that are tended to um, undermine the democratic dispensation we're currently enjoying. It, is that how you also see it? Or you don't see it like that? I don't see it that, like that because um, the good old professor didn't come out to say, hey, I want school to happen today. Um, he put it into context. Um, uh, his, his, his commentary was quite factual and it's very much in line with um, other countries that have to, you know, grapple with coup in, in, in the immediate past. Right. Um, there are some legitimate uh, issues on the ground. But what I see as anti-democratic than any other thing is corruption, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, expenditure, uh, COVID-19 expenditure that has to be proved and had to be shut down. Meanwhile, the expenditure, the expenses, the money belongs to the people. You spend it and you don't want to account for it. That is anti-democratic. What I see as anti-democratic is the seeming culture of silence. Okay, I am not a politician. Okay, I approach the issues as neutrally as possible. But what I see is a... a a, a, a well-orchestrated pattern of silence against critics using uh, what the information minister ju just said. And I find it quite unfortunate. Um, people said worse things, as a matter of fact, during JM's era. So if he also had to arrest people, I don't think we would have been where we are today. Okay. And what is happening is also a, a matter of grave concern to me because it will set in motion a very dangerous precedent. So the next time, power is transient, by the way. The next time another government comes and also decides to police social media to the extent of even the Ghana police service doing things beyond the, the remits of the law, it is something really, you know, uh, worrying. Okay. Let me come back. Please stay in. Stay, um, stay on. And let me come back in house and... and um... Continue my conversation with the lawyer too quickly. He's the head of legal at Solidaire Ghana. And the Solidaire Ghana is the civil society organization that gave the platform to Professor Raymond Atukuba to make that presentation or to deliver that presentation. Um, it's too quickly. I've, I've also heard some people say that, yes, even though there may be um, a legitimate case to be made about you know, conditions that give rise to cool, shouldn't we also be guarded by the kinds of comments that we make because what you then would be doing is that even if somebody doesn't have any intentions of staging a coup, comments, these comments have the propensity or have the tendency to incite people uh, for them to think along the direction of staging a coup. So perhaps, maybe, just maybe, the good old professor's comments could have been reworded. I agree with you that we should be careful in our rhetorics, right. our language. But I disagree with you that Professor Tugube's speech or his comments incited anybody. In fact, if you incite anybody to undertake coup, that would be unlawful. He never incited anybody. So you disagree with uh, Kojo Opon Kroma that what he has done is an attack on you democracy? You see, Kojo Opon Kroma and the other MPP communication people who are making all ranting about, they know the state of the economy. And so they want to divert attention. The reality of the situation is that, as we speak, fuel prices per liter have broken the eight. This is what Kojo Opon Kruma should be worried about. Are you saying, Mr. Tukwe Kwe, that today, if somebody decided touch wood, and we don't want that to happen, we have said it time and again, we don't want a coup uh, in this country. But if this, if this untoward thing happens, would you tell somebody that, well, we told you so? Would you, would you, would you say the fact that 
these conditions as Ghanaians find themselves would make it legitimate for somebody to want to stage a coup. Is that, is that the narrative? No, no. That, look, that the good old professor is pushing, which, you, which you're supporting? No, no, nobody. Look, Ghana will not see coup. We will not, also not support coup. Mm. We will never, ever justify. No, but when you say the conditions are right for a coup, what, what are you talking about? I mean, aren't you saying that if somebody staged a coup today, we are reminding the person's you, decision to do so We are reminding you that the various coup d'etats that have happened mm -hmm. in our history yes. and the recent coups that have happened in the sub-region, I think the president is the president of ECOWAS, is yes. that not so? Yes. And all these things are on his lap. Mm -hmm. Why are all these things happening mm -hmm. suddenly in the sub-region? Yes. And so it is only a reminder mm -hmm. that as president, the promises he gave Ghanaians, he ought to do something about them urgently. The fact that you, you live in your house and it is walled doesn't mean that thieves cannot come inside. But you need to make provision such okay. that when thieves want to come inside, it will be difficult. They will find it very difficult and invariably impossible. Right. And so what government, what Kojo Opon Nkrumah, Katie Hammond, the president, should be worried about is every week increasing prices. At the time that his excellent president, Joe Mahama, was leaving government, the city was 4.2 to the dollar. Today, it's almost eight, breaking the eight. This is difficult. This is, the situation is preposterous. It's absurd. The right. economic situation, look at what Fitch said. Let me read this to you. Fitch, general government debt reached an estimated 83% of GDP at end of 2021, including approximately 2% of GDP in debt held through the Energy Sector Levy Act Special Purpose Vehicle. We forecast government debt to remain on an upward path through 2024, meaning that there is no hope in sight. Okay? But accept debt to grow at a slower pace as the primary deficit narrows in 2022 and 2023. Debt affordability metrics will remain weak. Ghana's debt constitutes 539% of government revenue. Mm -hmm. That is bleak. There is no hope here. Compared with B media of 325%, interest payments were 44.4% of revenue in 2020, and the ratio is likely to continue rising through 2028, assuming a rising share of domestic debt in total debt in the absence of external financing. Now, our rating is now C. When government even is going to the international market to borrow, it's, it's almost impossible because our economy is now what? Very weak, and there is no hope. Well, the so these are the circumstances. The, the, the lawyer, too quick, wait. Yes. The, the government itself has accepted that, yes, the economy is challenged. Yeah, but you don't need but, to just, but, but, it's but, not but, mere rhetoric. Where, the, where government disagrees mm. is with the solution in terms of what the way forward is. They are saying that the way forward is not for persons to be saying that the social economic conditions in this country. Um, may make it imminent for a coup d'etat. I mean, that's where the government seems to have a problem with. So the issues about the, the state of the economy, in fact, that's the reason why government itself wants us to pass the bill, wants Moro, the E-Levy do you think... So you, that is not in doubt at all. Yes, but, but don't you think that if we are not careful, mm, the, state, the, the kind of coup that even some people are perceiving, like mm -hmm. Sunny said, right. it's about revolution. Mm. When the people rise up against government... We don't want to get there. So you're saying, okay, so essentially, now Dr. Atta Kennedy has been commenting on this matter as well. Um, we, we would play Dr. Atta Kennedy's uh, video. In fact, yesterday he sent me a video. I was there when he, uh, he sent me a WhatsApp and sent me a video on his thoughts about what Professor Raymond Atogoba has said. Would, um, yes, they've been told the video is ready. Let's watch the video. When we come back, we'll wrap up on this. Adib Sandy is still on, mm. on Zoom call and um, uh, lawyer Tukwekwe is here because there are calls for Professor Atogoba to be invited by the police. So I'll pick your thoughts on that. But let, let's listen to Dr. Atta Kennedy. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Atogoba's speech a couple of times. And um, as usual, as we have been inclined to do in recent times, we are attacking the messenger instead of the message. Professor Atuguba did not call for a coup. Indeed, he tried to rally the nation to prevent a coup. 
Yes, I disagree with some of the things he said. I think that as an attorney, if he was in court looking uh, to get um, his client some reliefs, he was long on his analysis and short on the solutions. But that is beside the point. When someone says that there are thieves in the neighborhood, so you must lock your gate when you are going to bed, he is not calling for your property to be stolen. In effect, sir, Ubi can say, so in Susu abode sehun, nan krofu abode shia, na undi watem. I think that we are attacking Professor Tuguba for stating facts that have already been considered by the government itself. The government itself has said we are broke. It has said that we are an extremist. Indeed, listening to the government, it will seem that the Yi Levy has acquired the status of Jesus feeding 5,000 people with a loaf of bread. It seems it will solve all our problems, and we know it won't. Let us um, ignore Professor Tuguba and deal with what he said that was true. Indeed, another um, mistake he made was when he said that um, he had apologized to former President John Mahama. It will seem that these cascading apologies to President Mahama will seem to give the impression that he did not deserve to lose 2016. And it might give him the impression that if he were to come back, all what he would have to do is to give us the same governance he gave us the last time and we should be happy. No, he lost for very good reasons and if he were to come back, I would hope that he will come back as a man who has reflected on his defeat and is prepared to give us better governance. But to return to Professor Tugube's point, we do not only need a commission for the E-Levy, we need constitutional accountability our financial and indeed all our management. We need to know what has happened to the COVID money. We need to know what has happened to all the loans that we borrowed. We need to have better accountability for how the government spends going forward. And when we do all these things, we just cannot um, give people a blank check to pass the E levy. The E levy must be passed by Parliament and it must be passed after honest, respectful negotiations on both sides. As President Kufuor called for, let us try and build consensus and show respect for one another. And let us all move forward knowing that Ghana belongs to all of us and let us stop demonizing people. Let us stop arresting people just because we don't like what is it that they are saying. Let us move forward together. So that's a new patriotic party stalwart, Dr. Arthur Kennedy. He's based in the States. He's a medical doctor. Yesterday, I was just there when he sent me this video, and he said, what do I think about it? And I said, well, Doc, that's your opinion. You've spoken your mind. I'll, I'll play this morning on Inside Pages. It says, so I'll watch it. So I believe Doc is awake, and um, he's, he's watching Inside Pages. Doc, thank you very much for that video. Um, very profound words indeed. Now, if you agree or disagree, Doc, you're free to send us a WhatsApp message to 0500 to 05000 This is Inside Pages on Metro Television. My name is Morado. We're looking at Professor Raymond Natugoba, who is a dean of the University of Ghana School of Law, uh, who delivered a lecture at the Rata Hotel on the 28th of February, where he looked at the reviewed 1992 constitution and its impact on the Ghanaian economy and looking forward. Um, that lecture went very well. The only aspect which some persons have been very critical of, the part where he talks about the fact that the socioeconomic conditions that Ghana finds itself may just give rise for a coup. And so the, the, the government should take note. But he himself... Um, preceded that particular statement by saying that we do not we do not want a coup. He said that. In fact, it's this day I read it. I read it when I when I was um, um, reading the intro to uh, this particular conversation. So, KT Amon says he should be picked up because he hasn't spoken well and that he's inciting violence. He's inciting coup. Um, what do you make of that? You know, um, 
people like Katie Hammond and the information minister and other government appointees gallivanting around and making all sorts of reckless statements mm -hmm. are behaving like um, a man who ejaculates before the woman arrives. Hey, I don't know what that means. And, but, and but, but before you, you continue with the ejaculation and analysis, um, let me speak to Adib Sani. Fine, let me just wrap up with Adib Sani. Adib Sani is, 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 is still on Zoom. I just want us to finish with him and then he can take leave of us because he has other things to attend to. So, Mr. Adib Sani, um, some uh, MPs, uh, we've heard in Shai, so MP, we've heard Katie Hammond, who are asking the state security to invite Professor Ramon Atuba for some questioning. Do you think that's the way to go? Um, I, I couldn't have also agreed with um, uh, uh, Prof more because um, we seem to be attacking the messenger rather than the message. When people say things in this country, uh, before we analyze, we ask ourselves whether it is NDC or MPP before we uh, do the biased analysis. Uh, we are so politically divided in this country that it has made some people lose their sense of direction or ability to even decipher uh, the truth from, from uh, the, the, the false. Um, it, is, it is quite worrying we have uh, uh, gotten to this, uh, knowing full well that our democracy is entrenched. Uh, we have come a long way as a country, especially since the inception of, of the Fourth Republic. But I also see why they are acting in this manner. Um, one, they are trying to divert attention uh, from, from the myriad of challenges we're facing in this country. Two, perhaps they've also lost touch with reality. I mean, the French re re Revolution, Marie Antoinette, when they went to tell her that the people are revolting because uh, they said they are hungry, they don't have food. And she told them to go tell the people to, I mean, to, to eat cake. They, they should buy them cake, you know. But what she doesn't know is cake is, is uh, an advancement to, to bread. So that showed, of course, how uh, remote she was to, to the people. And that is exactly what I see with, with politics uh, in Ghana. Um, third, I think um, we are, like I indicated earlier, I mean, I'm comfortable to say, we are returning to a primitive era when people's uh, words are closely guarded. And whatever we say, uh, would, would be used against you, whether it is justified, whether it is uh, unjustified. So we need to be very careful in this country in order not to set in motion a very dangerous precedence on which some other governments that might come after this would ride on. Because what I'm, I'm seeing is not good for our democracy. And like I indicated, the worry is not with who, but it's with the people revolution. But it needs two things to thrive. One, an inspirational leader and the second thing is Park. So we better watch out. I want to thank you very much, Shadib Sani, for accepting to talk to us on his site page this morning. Have a good day, sir. Adib Sani is a security analyst uh, joining us on Inside Pages to give us his perspectives on Professor Raymond that took up his presentation at uh, the Irata Hotel where he looked at a reviewed 1992 constitution and his impact on Ghana's economy and looking forward. Um, so I took a quick, uh, before you take leave of us, you were talking about the, you're telling us your reaction to calls for Raymond, and Professor Raymond are talking about to be invited by the police. That, so once you're done with that, we can... We can we yeah, can I mean, you know, <clears throat> government finds itself carried in a very terrible situation. How so? Uh, how do you mean? Um, the economy is going very bad. Mm -hmm. They don't appear to have solutions right. to what's happening. Clearly, they have shown that they are the incompetent ones mm. Uh, what they do is just mere lip service, and they know how to do it very well. But in terms of performance, uh, it's nothing to write home about. Professor Raymond Atukba may be invited by the police. What, what would you do about I am it saying like that? that if they, we are in a democratic world, mm. if they want to invite him, they should invite him. He's a lawyer. I am a lawyer. We all know that he has done nothing. That's why I keep on telling you that they are behaving like a man who ejaculates before the woman arrives. Right what to be the use after the woman has arrived. And so they should look at the substance rather than the form. What do you make of this? Just finally, finally, what do you make of this attempt to link the good old professor to the former president, um, Mr. John, uh, his excellency John Mahama, and the suspicion that he may be doing this uh, for the former president because he worked for him as executive secretary for close to two years? There is nothing wrong if he's doing this for him. 
that the fat speaks for itself. Mm. There is nothing wrong. I mean, he is a sympathizer of the NDC, but he's a man of substance. He's a man of reason. Right. And the issues that he gave are issues before Ghanaians. Mm. So even if he, I work for John Mahama, I'm an NDC. Okay. So I know what is good and what is bad. Right. I know that I have to drink clean water rather than dirty water. I don't need to 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 I don't need to to be told that this is bad water and this is good water. I mean, despite your political or party. Exactly. I know. Okay. I buy four myself. All right. And so clearly, my advice to this government is that look, if the economy is doing well, we will all benefit. If the economy is doing bad, we will all suffer. Indeed, we are all suffering. Mm. All that Solidaire seeks to do, and we are going to do more, is to bring out the issues to Ghanaians okay. through our agenda All right. for Ghana series. Okay. They should take them in good faith. Mm. They should stop chasing people and arresting people because it will compound the problem and even scare investors. Okay. Men of reason mm. should not do that. Oh, and okay. the president, I want to remind him right. that when he told Ghanaians that everybody should speak their mind. Okay. We should not be spe spectators. Mm -hmm. This is what we are doing. Okay. You should look at the issues that are being raised. Right. Indeed, he said he's upset. Mm -hmm. He's worried. Why? Because he's confused. He doesn't have solutions to the problem. Okay. But NDC and other people, especially CSOs as well, right. are willing okay. to support this economy. He okay. should call for an economic forum all right. so that we can all try to profess solutions okay. to these problems. Otherwise, I'm scared that things will be worse and worse and worse. Thank you very much. Uh, Lawyer Atukwe Kwe is the head of legal, Solid Air Ghana. We're going to be taking a break. But before we do that, a few messages have come through. So this one here from uh, Lemon Awal. It says that uh, Ghana has come a long way with its democracy and does not need a coup. The coup coming from the professor is reckless and unprofessional. It must not be glorified. Long live Ghana. Uh, Haruna Shaman says, Moro, good morning. What is wrong with somebody telling you to put your act right to avert a coup? So just do the needful and stop reacting unnecessarily. Uh, that's coming from Alhaji Haruna in Ashaiman. And this one says, my name is Abdullah Hakim. MPP is out for governing the country coming. Is out. Um, I think it says it was out of after government uh, come 2024. I, I think that's what he wants to say. Um, all right. So this one here says that, uh, good morning. Okay, so you're saying that you enjoy the conversation with uh, lawyer to quick quick.